Welcome to the Super Enzyme Justice League. I'm Nick Lucid from the Science Asylum. The League asked me to host this episode because I'm super awesome at science. So let's do this thing. You may have heard of a little something called antimatter. Maybe through headlines on social media or from blockbuster films like Angels and Demons. But what exactly is antimatter and why is it such a big deal? First, a historical disclaimer. We've only had a firm grasp on what matter is made of since the beginning of the 20th century. The neutron was discovered in 1935, the proton in 1919, and the electron in 1897. Before before that, we only had the idea that maybe matter was made of atoms. History has a weird way of naming things, and particles are no exception. Electron is Greek for amber, a material known for becoming negative when charged. And electrons are negative too, so boom, there's a name. Proton is Greek for first, as in the nucleus of the first atom, hydrogen. And neutron, arguably the best named of the three, is just a Franken word combining the words neutral and ion. Anyway, the point is that matter particles are a very new science. Antimatter particles are even newer. They were first suggested by Paul Dirac in 1928. He came up with an equation that explained a lot about electrons, which remember are negative. And then he realized it just as easily worked for positive electrons, or positrons. Positrons weren't actually observed until 1929, one year after Dirac's paper. This wasn't a technology issue. We just never thought to look until then. So what exactly is antimatter? Well, most properties of matter have two options. Charge is positive or negative spin is up or down, etc. The only exception is mass, which can only be one way. Antimatter is just the opposite of matter. By that we mean an antiparticle has the same mass as a normal particle, but the rest of its properties are opposite. For example, electrons and positrons have exactly the same mass, but opposite charge. Electrons carry a negative charge, and positrons carry a positive charge. This might not seem like it's all that extraordinary, but it's kind of a big deal if they get near each other. Getting an electron and a positron together is catastrophic for both. They literally cease to exist and all their mass is released as high energy light. It's called annihilation and it's pretty spectacular. As it turns out, all the particles that make up normal matter have an antimatter partner. Electrons have positrons, protons have antiprotons, and neutrons have antineutrons. If any of those pairs are brought together, they will annihilate. This even scales up, so hydrogen can have an antihydrogen, carbon can have an anticarbon, molecules can have antimolecules, people can have antipeople, galaxies could have antigalaxies, but they don't. If you're wondering why not, come over to the Science Asylum and learn why matter and antimatter annihilate each other, and why the universe isn't just a giant empty void of nothingness. If you enjoyed this episode, please like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And as we say in the Science Asylum, it's okay to be a little crazy.